So if you look at this here, how much it's protruding, you know, it's about half an inch. That's that's okay, but being a perfectionist, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Dremel, I'm gonna cut the threads down so it's not protruding quite as far. All right, so we got the Dremel tool here with the cutoff wheel, and all we're gonna do is cut the threaded parts off. All right, so we have our cutoff tool installed here on our Dremel, so all we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut that threaded portion off all the way down at the base of where the nut thread's on. So before we do that, we wanna make sure that we're being safe. We got our safety glasses, we got our reflective belt, Go make sure we're being extra safe and hearing protection if you want, all right? There we go. All right, you don't have to get crazy with cleaning it up, but if you want, you can just take a flat file. Knock any sharp spots off and you're pretty much ready to go. All right, so that's all there is to that. Now what I'm gonna do is any metal dust, I'm just gonna wipe off. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the remainder of that JB Weld to glue our foam onto the inside. All right, so next we're gonna talk about what foam are we gonna use to pad our saddle, right? So here's this military issue ISO mat, right? Just a regular old sleeping mat. This is a section cut out here. This is a little bit wider foam. Uh, it's a little bit denser too. This is out of uh, a 50 cal can, right? So for the guys in the field trying to construct one of these deployed, you can use what you have available. This is packing foam out of a, of a cardboard case that a rifle is shipped in. These are these little like foamy kneeling pads you can get in the garden center. They're like a couple bucks. So if you don't want to buy a huge sleeping mat just to cut it all up. And plus it's an added benefit of already being all drab. So whatever foam you want to use, it doesn't really matter if it's closed foam or open foam because it's going to get wrapped up with duct tape when it's all said and done anyway, right? So the majority of guys are going to use that half inch thick sleeping pad wherever foam that they have available, right? So we're probably gonna use a mix of two. If you have the thicker foam, right, this is probably too thick, because if you put it in the saddle, you see it eats up most of the space. What you can do is you can take a razor knife, you can very carefully start peeling it back and cutting, and you can cut slices out that way, right? That's a pain in the butt, so we're not gonna. So what we wanna do is we wanna figure out how much foam we need here, right? So we're gonna have it covered for basically one end here. We're just gonna take a Sharpie and mark where I wanna cut, right? So we slid that off, take my razor knife, just go ahead and cut the foam. It doesn't have to be perfect, you can trim it up on the fly, but here we go. So now, as you can see, that foam itself is now covering the screw, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the side walls same thing with that foam in place. I'm just gonna go ahead, take it, mark it with a Sharpie, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. This is something that's gonna get beat up, so I'm not gonna sit there and like take a ruler and carefully do it. You don't need to spend two hours building this tripod. When it's all said and done, it should realistically take you about a half hour, right? So we got one piece there, take the other piece, I'm gonna put my Sharpie right there. Mark the other one. All right, so we have the base and we have the wings of our, of our tripod. Now, if you look at this, how, much, how big of an opening does that make? Well, that makes probably about an inch and a half, two inches, right? So a little bit under, yeah, a little bit under two inches, right? So inch and a half or so. Now the thing to keep in mind is that when I tape this down, it's gonna compress the foam a little bit. And also by wrapping it with duct tape, it's gonna build it back out. So it's gonna compress it in, so I'm gonna lose a little bit of that opening, but I'm gonna gain it back by bulking it up with duct tape. So what I wanna do is since I still have some of this JB Weld left, is I'm just gonna go ahead and glue that foam onto the base here. here. So I'm just gonna slather this down here and there. Now this isn't completely necessary, but instead of letting the JB well go to waste, and also to make the foam stay in place while I'm taping it, and after it's dry, why not? All right, so we, we slather that down here and there. Slide my foam in, put my side wall foam in, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty much ready to be taped, okay?
Now bear in mind, if you intend on using your tripod with wider forearms, like uh, uh, say a McMillan stock or Accuracy International stock, then what I might want to do is take this foam and before I glue it on, I cut it in half so it's only about an inch or a, about a half inch wide. This is about a full inch. What do you got here? Yeah, so it's about an inch. I can cut this in half and create a wider opening for my form to nestle down inside. Uh, if you're going to be using it on like a SCAR or um, like an AR-15 build, then you probably want to go a little bit tighter so it's about an inch and a half to two inches open. So the easiest way to tape is whatever duct tape you have, whatever you want to use. I got a roll of Gorilla Tape here so this stuff's pretty tight. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tear strips off. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, I'm going to tear it in half. So what I do is I have a bunch of strips of duct tape before I even begin. Now if you guys go to the hardware store, you're going to notice that there's two colors of Gorilla Tape, right? There's black and there's like mossy oak camouflage. So my personal vendetta against Gorilla Tape, despite how much I love the product, is I wrote him an email a couple years ago saying, hey, why don't you guys make it in like flat dark earth or coyote brown because then everybody in the military will buy it regardless of the service and then hunters will buy it because it's earth tone and then people that just don't care what color the duct tape is they'll continue to buy it i got an email back saying thank you for your concern we don't want to appeal to a niche market like the military or the hunting community and then like a year later it came out with mossy oak which nobody in the military is going to buy because it's mossy oak they just want to make it a nice, flat, ugly, brown, neutral color. They'd be selling it on every PX and on every base in, in the world. But no. They didn't want their tape to be horrific. Yeah, apparently. All right, so all we're going to do is we're just going to tape this up, right? So I got the sidewalls here. Now I'm going to tape the base. So you're going to use quite a bit of duct tape doing this, right? The important thing is that we don't cover up the shoe, all right? So here, I got a little piece on the shoe, so I'm just gonna take my razor knife and cut that piece off. There's no real method for this. Whatever you have to do to basically secure the foam to the base, uh, like I said, it's, it's gonna take a couple minutes, so we're gonna cut to that. <laughs> That's basically all there is to it, right there. So we got it taped up really good. We got all the black covered up. So make sure you guys send an email to Gorilla Tape and be like, hey guys, seriously, great duct tape. Make it in tan. Because I had to use regular duct brand duct tape. So it's, it's tan now, it's not jet black. So here's the new saddle we just made. Here's the one I made years ago. You see it's not pretty. All that matters is that it works, right? Now alternatively, because duct tape almost always has that sheen, you can camouflage it. You can get a, it's like fabric gaffers tape that you can get at photography supply houses, right? And I think that's what I used here. See how it's like a matte color? There's a couple different companies that make like a matte, it's like a cloth type tape. Uh, whatever you want to do to get rid of that shine. You see like the difference between this olive drab military issue duct tape and this gaffer's tape down here. So you can camouflage it however you want. Uh, obviously we want to go with earth tone colors over jet black. So next we're going to talk about a little add-on that we can do for this. So we have the forearm, or we have the, the saddle, we have a forearm. So if we take an AR forearm, you see it nestles in there pretty good. So this is one that uh, we're going to be doing a video about from 2A Armament, right? It's a really nice lightweight, thin M-lock rail. So that fits in there pretty snug, right? It won't fall out on its own. But what we want to do is we want to have it where if we want to, we can have the rifle resting in the saddle and we can let go of the gun and the gun's not going to fall out. So how we do that is we just add a little bit of Velcro and then we're going to have a cross strap that you can choose to use or not use. This is just black industrial strength Velcro that you can get from Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever. We're violating that that rule of black, right? But 
that's what I what I have on hand is what you can get locally if you don't want that black velcro what you can do is you can go ahead and order really strong adhesive velcro like guys put on their their helmets you can get camouflage colors like coyote brown and green and you can order that adhesive velcro from milspec monkey they have it on their website usually right so we're going to use that and then i just have some loop coyote brown velcro so that's going to camouflage that black a little bit so what we're going to do is we're just going to figure out where we want it but you know what we're going to do we're going to give ourselves a little extra so we have a pull pad all right and then put our forearm here. And then we're gonna strap it down. And then once again, we're gonna give ourselves a little extra to compensate for wider hand guards. And also if I want, I can take the, the Velcro here, take a little piece of duct tape, and I can make a little pull tab for it, right? So that's always hanging in the breeze. So if I wanna pull my gun out real quick, I just tear the strap and then ditch my rifle right so that's that's an option you can sit there on the sewing machine and sew all kinds of pull tabs and all kinds of crazy stuff you can do whatever you want with it so now just like we paint everything we're going to dust this with some matte rust-oleum camouflage paint and what it's going to do is it's going to take the sheen off right you can choose to skip the step step but the matte spray paint is going to help cut down the glare of the duct tape right uh, so that's really all I'm gonna go, that's all I'm really gonna do with it. I could do it multiple colors, I could match it to the paint scheme of the tripod, but at the end of the day, it's gonna flake off because it's a, it's a slick surface. So lastly, there's a couple add-on things you can do, right? So we add the elastic to the tripod, but if you want, what you can do is you can take jute or you can take burlap and you can cut yourself some small strings of it, right? So about six inches or whatever. And if you want, you can tie this on to the tripod, right? And what it's gonna do is it's gonna help break up those those nice linear lines of the tripod, right? And also it's gonna add as another tie on spot. So you can pull the elastic out and stuff vegetation inside, or you can just take a veg and you can just tie it on with a real simple knot and then tear it off. And as this stuff gets worn off and beat up and everything else, then like so be it. You can just replace it with additional jute. Alternatively, what you can do is once this thing is all collapsed, how am I gonna carry it, right? Well, if I want to have a rifle with a sling and I have my tripod, I don't have to carry my tripod all the time. So what you can do is you can get some one inch webbing. Once again, you can go on eBay, go online somewhere and just find one inch webbing, whatever color you want. And you can just go ahead and take it and you duct tape it on and you can make a real simple sling for your tripod. Okay. So you can just literally shoot, stand up, shoulder your rifle or sling your rifle and then just collapse your tripod and sling it too. So you can have it where if you're walking along, say you're hunting, you have it slung across, or across your body, across your back, and then you can have your rifle at the ready. And if you see a shot at distance that you know that you want to use that tripod, you just crouch down, pull your tripod off your back, and go ahead and, and set it up to have that more stable shot. That's a personal preference thing. Some guys like it, some guys don't. We didn't talk about this earlier, but when you're selecting your tripod, if you can find a tripod that has a hook on the bottom, that works even better. And we'll show you once this project's complete how, how it looks when it's set up. But this little hook here is great because what it allows you to do is you can take your day bag, you can take a sandbag, you can take whatever you have, you can get it suspended off this. So when the rifle is fully deployed, particularly when it's in the fully uh, full standing mode, right? You're, you have the legs deployed to shoot from the standing. It won't let the wind blow it over. It acts as a counterweight. So you can hang your ruck or your day bag or sandbag, or whatever you want from that hook. And it's going to keep the tripod from swaying in the wind. So that's something to look for. If you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. You can just tie a little loop parachute cord on the center beam with a loop at the bottom, and then you can just take a carabiner and clip on that parachute cord and use that as a counterweight.
All right, so here is the finished product after we just got some rounds down range. Just kind of uh, testing out the scope. We had to zero the scope. Just got that to test, so I wanted to zero it. So we use the uh, tripod here for that. As you can see, uh, as you were talking about, you can put some weight on the bottom of it. It really secures it out. And if you wanted to get a real lightweight, kind of like a seat, this is from Coleman. I got this for like eight bucks. So all in all, you know, how much was the hardware? Probably like under 20 bucks. Like 25 bucks. Oh, yeah, so like 20 bucks. The, the tripod was about 45, 65. So for around 70 bucks, you can get a nice lightweight uh, little stool and a uh, nice tripod set up with a, a homemade saddle for it. So what are your thoughts on this? No, I think it turned out great. I mean, it's, uh, it's always fun to do arts and crafts with you. <laughs> but you can see, I mean, it's just from common stuff found at the hardware store, some Velcro, some glue, some miscellaneous tape. You know, you can put together a pretty stable uh, tripod setup. Here's that little piece of uh, Velcro we added to secure the gun in there. But uh, depending on how far back you want it in the saddle, see now it starts, the center of gravity changes. So yeah. if I have it all the way forward and Velcroed in, I can trust walking away from this rifle with the counterweight in the form of the day bag. I can trust walking away from this and it's not going to blow over from the wind or fall over on its own or anything. So because that's bad for the optics and obviously bad for your gear. The added benefit of hanging your day bag or your shooting bag off the bottom is that you have everything accessible. So you can have your gear. If you need to grab something else like, oh, what is that? You can reach down and grab your binos or whatever from it, right? The other thing is that you can suspend camo net around this, or uh, if you have a ghillie suit, you can just kind of drape your ghillie suit on the front and secure it with uh, the elastic. And it kind of builds a, a real simple improv one-man shooting blind, right? I'm not sure I necessarily do that like in life or death situations, but it definitely works well for shooting coyotes and, and hunting applications, right? So yeah, uh, it's a versatile piece of gear. Like I said, if you don't have a hook on your tripod, you can just add a carabiner and clip your pack on that way. You don't want to overload your hook because you know it is plastic. You could potentially break it off. So I want to hang 100 pounds off of it, but you know 20, 30 pounds act as that counterbalance works out pretty well. Yeah, we had to empty out some. Yeah, it takes some, some gear. Out. gear. But, uh, but I think for, for the price and being super lightweight, you can always buy a more you know heavier tripod if you're into that. Yeah. But for this one, I wanted to go pretty lightweight to put on some sort of go bag or whatever, and I like it. Yeah, it definitely turned out well. I mean, if you're gonna go for the best, I would definitely recommend buying a Manfrotto tripod. They're made in Italy out of carbon fiber and magnesium. They're crazy expensive though, but I mean, they're just virtually indestructible. Yeah. If price is no option. If price is no option, I'd say go with a Manfrotto. But for your average Joe shooter, guy that just wants it for shooting, or even the guy that you know wants it as a SWAT cop to shoot out of, uh, out of an elevated position, like uh, you know, second, like third story window, yep. this this is a good application. This is this this will work well enough. Like I said, mine's a cheapy one, and I use that for years, and it's still going strong. So. Yeah. So if you guys have any, uh, if you're curious about what we use and everything, I'm gonna put it down in the description. You can check out Nate over on Instagram, at GripStop, and uh, all the links will be down below to uh, everything you saw here today. So if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. If you guys uh, have made some pretty cool uh, shooting uh, tripods or whatever, go ahead and put that in the comments down below, or better yet, make a video about it. Until next time, later. Concussion was great. Yeah, that fucker, that actually lifted my ears.